Hi, in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to thread the Juki machines in Santa Ana College's classroom. Um, the first step is after you put your spindle of thread over here, um, you wanna make sure your thread, I'm gonna tilt the camera. You wanna make sure your thread goes up here and through this hole. Um, this just guarantees decent tension for it to be coming down and then thread it into your machine. Um, that is step number one. A lot of times these are always already threaded so students kind of forget about it but always double check that. That will cause you a lot of trouble if the thread is not up there in the first place. Okay, so that would be step one. Um, step number two, we have a post. Most of these have a post. The thread is threaded from the back towards the front. I'm actually just gonna unthread this. So my rule of thumb when threading these is just, it's always back to front, starting in the back towards the front, see that? And then it's also right to left. So right here we have um, a tension disc. There's like a little spring that's squeezing these two discs together. You want your thread to go in between it. So it just goes up and over. Now, if your machine doesn't have a tension disc, don't worry about it. Um, when I worked in the parallel industry, I noticed some of my sample sewers wouldn't even thread the tension disc. They just had the thread come out. So your machine will actually still work great without it. But if it does have it, you might as well just thread it. So it's just up and over. I feel like kind of like a rainbow. It doesn't go underneath. You don't twist it a lot. It's basically a half circle if you think about it, up and over. Okay, so our rule of thumb is always from back to front or right to left. Those are the rules of threading this thing like to zoom in again. Our next step is this stationary post over here. So I'm going to thread it right to left. Now, so many students are tempted to thread this bottom hole left to right. Resist the urge, stick to the rule. We wanna thread it right to left. And when I do that, it kind of makes this little S. So can you see the thread, how it kind of crosses over? Okay. Now, the next step, this is also where our students make a mistake, ignore this little hook. I know he's so tempting, you just wanna snap him in, but do not do it yet. We go straight to our tension discs. These are two discs here, and they are being squeezed together by this spring. I can unscrew this knob, lefty-loosey, and it loosens up the spring to kinda give the tension disc less tension, or it can go righty-tighty and it makes it more tight. You just want to get your thread in between the two tension discs. So it goes on the side and under. I hold the, I know you can't really see it. I hold it for tension and I pull it in. You really just want to make sure that it's clicked in here. Very common for students to just kind of delicately do that and then it's not really clicked in or it's behind it. So for success, you want to make sure it's clicked in, okay? That's a little tricky. Now while you're up here, there's this cute little springy guy. Do you see this cute little springy guy? He's so fun. So you come down and make sure it kind of catches him. I'm gonna try another angle. Okay, oops. So I just did the tension disc. Come down and catch that little springy guy. And while you're down here, catch this stationary hook. Okay? Now we're gonna go back up, catch the other stationary hook. And then we have our famous take-up lever. Here is the take-up lever. And guess which way we thread it. If you said right to left, you are correct. From the right side towards the left. Oops. There we go. Wonderful. Okay. Now we come straight down and we catch this other stationary hook pretty easily. No big deal. And then we have another stationary hook kind of hiding back here. We catch. Okay, so now we only have two more steps to finish threading this guy. We have this little hole, and then we have our needle. So the rules I've been telling you is thread everything from the back towards the front, and thread everything right towards the left. The last two, we get to break our rules. Thank goodness, because this guy would be really hard to thread from back to front. So we get to thread him from the front towards the back, thank gosh. Now we have to thread our needle from the left towards the right. 
If you mess up on this guy, your thread's just gonna keep coming out and you're gonna complain that your machine's broken. Um, so make sure you thread it from the left to the right to avoid any of those problems. So if you are having trouble threading your needle, there is this little tool, he's kind of handy. You stick it through the needle and it kind of makes, there we go. I put this little metal thing and then I can get my thread through the metal opening and then I can pull it through. So that's another way to thread the needle. And then when you're done, take the thread and put it underneath the presser foot and pull it towards the back and test out your tension. What does that feel like? Um, you wanna practice this every day before you start sewing. Pull your thread towards the back and feel that tension. Um, right now, I can feel there's a little tension. It feels perfect to me, it feels good. And I can say that because I have so much experience of pulling it. So if I ever pull it and it's super loose, right away I know, hmm, I probably didn't thread it right. I probably didn't get it in my tension disc um, or maybe my tension's too loose. Or if it's really tight and I can't move it, I maybe did something wrong and I recheck. So it's really important to pull it and just kind of start training yourself as far as what feels good. Um, now when you pull it, make sure you pull it towards the back so that your thread is pulling our metal presser foot. If you pull it towards the front, if I pull it towards the front, I'm gonna bend my needle because uh, I'm pulling tension against my needle. Don't do that because your needle, your needle, it might not break right now, but if it's bent, it's gonna break when you start sewing. So you really make sure it's underneath your presser foot, pull it towards the back, that way all the weight's being pushed against your foot and pull the tension, okay? Now, we need to get our bobbin thread up. So let me show you how to do that. First of all, you wanna make sure you have a bobbin case and a bobbin. And the way we put the bobbin is, I like to have the thread coming down like this, and then I hold the case open. This is the top part where the needle comes in and out. If you were to put the top like this, your needle's just gonna break because it can't go through the metal. So I hold this part up at the top. And there's a post right there, it just goes in the middle of your bobbin. And again, the thread's coming down. There's a little slit, the thread goes through the slit, and it comes up and it clicks in through this hole, okay? And then as I pull it, it should be turning clockwise. You can always look at the clock on the wall if you kind of forget which way is clockwise. Now the only problem with this is that it falls out so easily. Um, so when we put it in our machines, it's really important to pull this lever right here. And when I open this lever, these little clamp guys, they grab my bobbin, they grab the edges. So now when I dip it, it doesn't fall out. And I could put it in the machine with confidence that it's not gonna fall out. See how it's kind of falling right there because I let go. So all the way in, hold it open, it's not gonna fall out. And in our machine, there's a post, the post goes in there and it should just slide in. If you have to use any muscle at all, you're doing something wrong. So stop and call a teacher over. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get some kind of zoom for you. So I'm holding it, hold on a second, make sure it's actually in there. You guys can see. See how the top part, that's where the needle's gonna go? Make sure your needle's up, of course. There's a post that just goes in the middle and should just slide in and then I can let go. Super, super simple and easy. Um, yeah, so practice that. Okay, so then once it's in, I need my thread, my bobbin thread, to come up to our throat plate. So to do that, the top machine should actually all be threaded. Okay, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna take one stitch. I'm gonna do this at an angle. Okay, so to take one stitch. Now, one stitch is when, sorry. One stitch is when our take-up lever starts at the top. Our take-up lever does one full rotation. That is one stitch. A lot of beginner students think one stitch is when the needle goes down and up. That's actually only half a stitch, okay? So to do one stitch, 
It's very important to do it by hand because if you do it press your foot, you're, it's gonna be really hard to do just one. Um, you have to roll the presser, the what do you call this, the hand wheel towards you. Keep doing it towards you. Please don't do it away. I've seen people make it work, but again, eight times out of 10, it's a mess. So just towards you, towards you, towards you. And you'll see the needle is going down as I push it towards me. Okay, do you see how the needle has, now the needle is up. But if I pull my thread, it won't come out. It's like jammed. And this is where people think it's broken. It's not jammed. The take up lever right here is down. So he's locking the thread. He's just doing what he's told to do, locking it. So what we have to do is we have to keep turning the hand wheel towards us until our take up lever returns to the top. And then voila, you should see a little loop and you should be able to pull the top thread um, without any tension. There you go, do you see the little loop? That's one stitch we took, just one full stitch, not half a stitch, not two, one. So I pull that loop and it's, it's our bobbin thread and eventually it becomes unlooped and it's two strings. And I take both those strings, I put them underneath the presser foot and I pull it and I feel that tension. I test out that tension to look for trouble. That's how. Now, if you keep rolling the hand wheel to do two stitches or more, you're gonna end up with a jam. And in this class, if you get a jam, you have to get all the thread out of your machine and unjam it, okay? All the students have to do that themselves. Um, it's just part of learning. Okay, and now we're ready to go. Now, we're almost ready to go. <laughs> the very last step, which is so important, and I'll admit, one semester I forgot to tell students to do this last step, because we were so excited we got this far, and we had Jam City after that, is, okay, you put your fabric underneath your presser foot. The most important thing is pull down your presser foot. There's a lever on the back of the machine that lifts it up and down. So look for that lever. Make sure the foot is down before you sew. And then it will um, control the stitch length. Um, what's neat about these machines and all sewing machines is that there's these little grip teeth, these little feed dogs, and they move your fabric for you. So when you put your fabric here, theoretically, you don't even need your hands to sew. Watch, I'm gonna hit the presser foot. It's magically moving my fabric for me, and it's doing it at the right speed. You just need your hands to steer it. So if you need to turn or go straight, that's what your hands are for. But you are not pushing it, you're not pulling it. The feed dogs know how fast the fabric should go, let them do their job. Um, and they can only do that if your presser foot is down. So make sure your presser foot is down. Um, da -da -da. What else is important to tell you guys? I guess after you do a few stitches, just look at the bottom, make sure the bottom stitch looks good, just like the top. If it does, you're in business. The next step to get your fabric out, turn the hand wheel towards you, and you're gonna keep turning it until, I know my needle's up right now, but I'm gonna keep turning it until the take up lever's at the top. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot. Now this time, I'm gonna use, there's a little pad underneath the machine, I'm gonna use that with my knee, I'm gonna push it to the right, and my foot comes up temporarily, and I can pull my fabric towards the back, and then when I release the little um, little knob underneath the machine, the foot comes down, so that's pretty handy. And then I can cut this guy as well. To sew backwards on your machine, you just hold this lever down, and it'll sew backwards as long as you hold it. This dial changes your stitch length. We usually work on about a three, but if you want a longer stitch, go to five. Short, you can go down to one. And then this changes our tension. Lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. Um, and that's pretty much all you really need for these machines as far as dials. This is, oh, up here's another pressure dial with the foot. Of, if you have like really thick fabric, we can adjust this or really thin, but typically students don't need to adjust that. Um, yeah, that's basically the tutorial for these machines.